okay, there's a big difference in owning a shop, working in a shop, working in a salon suite versus owning a school, okay? It's a big difference. It's a big difference in playing college sports and playing in the NFL or the NBA. Big difference. One is income, okay? Let's talk about that. In the shop, you make money by exchanging time for money. You have booth rent, you have commission. You're babysitting grown men and grown women. It can be a headache. I'm not saying it's a headache for everybody because there are some people out there that have shops or whatever, and it's great. But it's a lot of competition too, crabs in a barrel. When you open a school, total different ball game. It's nothing wrong working in a shop. Shop is great. There are people in the shop made a lot of money. Let her have doctor. She made a lot of money in the shop. Razor Chick makes a lot of money in the shop. Kim Kim, a lot of money in the shop. But you may not be that person. You may not be that one. See, but with a school, you can be average or even below average like I was. I was a below average technician. There's no way that I can do hair like any of you all or cut hair like any of you. If y'all want to know who the worst barber on the planet is, me and our barber. He can't cut hair worth a lick. He don't even know how to cut straight hair. He been licensed since 1990 and don't know how to cut straight hair. You, I surely do not. Don't know how to do a shampoo, conditioner, relax her color, but yeah, he been licensed 33 years. He had a school for 20 years and don't know how to do any of that. I do not. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I do. So when they tell you, well, he can't cut hair that good, they're telling you the truth. When he opened the school, he didn't even have the skill sets. He didn't know how to teach. I surely did not. I used the my ladies, somebody that was experts, and I read it to the students, and I played it on the TV screens to the students. A student asked me to show them how to cut. I can show them how to cut, relax, do a relaxer color, everything, because it was in my ladies' book. Now, I didn't do it for them. Whenever they say, well, they would call me Mr. Chen. Well, Mr. Chen, I need you to do it. Nope. Because when you get out there at that shop, I'm not going to be there to tie your shoe for you. So I am not going to do that for you. They didn't know I didn't know how to do it with physically. You can tell somebody how to do something. So I'm sharing this with you all because a lot of y'all have that little voice inside of you telling you you can't do it. Oh, yes, you can. A lot of y'all got family members and friends telling you you can't do it. You don't have what it takes. You don't have a six month day rainy day fund. You don't have money put up, saved. I didn't either. You don't have a staff. You don't have help. I didn't either. You do what you can do. God will do what you cannot do. It, it's not gonna rain forever, y'all. Just cause you start, look, Tyler Perry, he started as a one man record crew with his plays. Now, he doesn't have it nothing. Now, you got Tyler Perry students and all that. T.D. Jakes, a one-man crew. Ten members in a storefront church. He had one suit. They used to call him One Suit Jakes. Had holes on the bottom of his shoes. Paul Mitchell started in the trunk of his car with $700, but a ridiculous, sickening worth ethic. Doesn't matter how y'all start. What matters is how you finish. So a lot of y'all looking at people right now. See, everybody looks at me right now. But what about here when I was in prison cutting hair for three cents an hour? What about that? When I was crying every night in prison and the only person that would answer my call when I would call, I got one 15-minute phone call, was my mama. The only letters that I got was from my mama. See, what about that when I was released from prison 20-hour bus ride home from Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. No money, no job, no driver's license, bad credit. And my mama picked me up there and I had to go live at a federal halfway house for a while. What about that? What about when I was doing manicures and pedicures to the men and women at the federal halfway house, accepting whatever they could pay me, some didn't have anything. See, you got to think about 
all of that. What about when I was in that jail cell and that little steel toilet and the, the man had the duty right there and I had to spend it. Then when I had to do a bowel movement, he had to be right there. See, people don't think about that. Yeah, y'all looking at right now, but you got to look at the past. All the people had to overcome and what they went through to get to where they had. See, some of y'all are too prideful. You, you, you want to start at the top. You want to go to heaven, but you don't want to die. You want a six pack, but you don't want to work out and drink and eat your herbs and stuff. See, some of y'all, the your will has to be stronger than you want. You want this stool, but you ain't willing to do nothing. You ain't will, even willing to invest nothing. You, you, you're gonna, you're gonna reap what you sow. So quit dreaming if you ain't willing to put no skin in the game. So look at this right here. You can't look at where people are at right now. And then what about when I was in the shop? I wasn't making a lot of money then. Didn't have no customers. Haircuts was about five and ten dollars back then. And I told him I was gonna open a school. You gotta dream like a fool. You gotta take risks. You gotta think big. Well, what if I fail? Well, what if you don't? What if you win? Gerard, what if you win, Angelia, Eric? What if you win, Joy Sanders, Elani, Gerard? What if you win, Jasmine, Chemistry, Leandra? What if you win? What if you get accredited, Lisa? And the government's wiring 20, 25,000 in your bank account. Nate, what if never, what if you win? Regina? What if God blows on that thing, Sam, Scissor Queen, and blesses you beyond measure? What if you win, Tanisha? Victoria? Vivian? What if you win, David? Think about that. What if you win, Jacques? A lot of people are always talking about. Well, <laughs> what if you lose? What if it's shut down? What if you win? I'll never forget. Talking to my mentor, Miss Velma, 26 years old at the time. Scared and all that. But what if I fail, Miss Velma? What if you don't fail, Chan? Think about when you do win, what you gonna do? What are you going to do if you win? Break the generational curse of poverty in your family. What are you going to do if you win? Retire your mama, buy her a mansion. What, what, what are you going to do? Stay at nice hotels, travel, take care of your family, retire your wife, your husband, put the kids in a different zip code, buy the car you always wanted, eat where you always wanted. Well, what are you going to do if you win? You, you, you should have your list. When I got out of prison, I had my list. I'm enjoying being a man. I'm enjoying buying my mom a mansion. I'm enjoying retiring her. My mom worked like a slave, like a slave. I don't even know my daddy. They divorced when I was three years old, never met that man. What you gonna do if you win? Think about that. Everybody's always talking about if you lose. Hell, what if you win? You got to think about that. What you got to lose? If you're a barber, a hairstylist, Delta, you ain't got nothing to lose. Like Ms. Velma told me. Because guess what? If you don't succeed with the school, you're going to be right back where you're at right now. Working in the shop. So you ain't lost nothing. But what if you win? You're going to be driving by the shop. When I'm in town, I drive by them shops and just keep on going. Just driving by. Think about it. And so I listened to Miss Velma and I opened up this school right here. It was a raggedy school in the hood. That school was cheaper than y'all's shop. It was cheaper than y'all's shop. 
And then twenty thousand dollars that I took to open that school because I worked like a slave. That was back in nineteen ninety eight, about twenty four years ago, almost twenty five years ago. Twenty thousand dollars back then was quite a bit of money to save, y'all. Twenty five years ago, you you got to think about that. Twenty five years ago, but I did eat oatmeal every day. I sacrificed. I shopped at Goodwill. Shopped at secondhand stores. I did not go out to eat. Wasn't buying no shoes. I wasn't doing all, wasn't smoking and drinking and doing all that crap. Wasn't connecting in relationships with people that bring you down with other grown folks that you got to take care of. See, a lot of us can't move forward in whatever it is that we want in life. Whether it's a school or, or hell, family freedom and peace of mind is worth more than anything. Who are you connected with? I had to cut some folks. I had to cut everybody off when I got out of prison. All my family members and friends had to cut them off. They didn't have the right mindset. They wasn't thinking what I was thinking. I don't care if y'all drink. I ain't got nothing against that. But when you're on assignment with God, you don't have time for that. When, when Nehemiah was building the wall, he did not have time to be drinking, smoking weed, hooking all that. He was on assignment. You don't have time for that. Do, do that later. Go ahead and get to the bag and secure your family and your future. Then go watch football. Ain't no sense in watching football today. Most men watch football all day yesterday on Saturday, and they watch football. They're going to watch football all day today on Sunday. You don't, have, you don't deserve to be watching football, dude. You need to put your family in a better... Hell, I got 13 TVs in my house. My house is over 10,000 square feet. Eight barrels, seven baths. Guess what? Them TVs in my house, I've had that house for probably 14, 15 years, I guess. I don't know. They flat screen TVs. Do you know I've only replaced one TV in that house? And that was in my mama's room. She's seven, eight years old. And all she do is watch TV, but she deserves to watch TV. All the other TVs like brand new. The TV in my bedroom like brand new. You know why? I don't watch TV. For what? What are y'all going to look at on TV? Who are y'all following on social media? What's in y'all's timeline? You, you should not have time for garbage. You should be so focused on your dreams and goals. You shouldn't be worried about what's going on here and there because whatever's going on here and there is not going to be dictated on your success. I don't care who the president is. I don't care who gets in Congress. I don't care who wins. It is not determined by that. God is going to determine your success. Your work ethic is going to determine your success. Your, your sacrifice is going to determine your success. You got to be focused. What was I going to say? I'm a convicted felon. Oh, I just got out of prison. I'm on federal parole. I ain't got no job, no driver's license, bad credit. I had it. I'm a black man. I had everything, every excuse, every card stacked against me. But I had that joker. God. Doesn't matter if I was dealt a bad hand. You ever play space with somebody? I, it doesn't matter how good of a hand you get. If your partner has a the best hand, if if he or she don't know how to play that card, guess what? You're gonna get set. You, you, you're going to get set. And spade players know that it does not matter the hand that you was dealt. It's how you play your cards. How are you going to play your cards? Going into 2023, how are you going to play your cards, Sam? How are you going to play your cards, Angelia? Doesn't matter the cards you was dealt in South Carolina, George. How are you going to play them? Eric, Elani, Serena, how are you going to play your cards? Jasmine, I don't care the hand that you was dealt, whether you was in prison, group home, molestation, divorce, I don't care. Welcome to the family. We've all been to hell and back. But how are you going to play the cards, chemistry, Landry? How are you going to play them cards in Kentucky? Lisa, Nat, Nevron, how are you going to play them cards in Delaware? Regina, Raquel, how are you going to play the cards, Sam, Kim G, Tanisha, Victoria, Vivian? What that's what's going to determine your success. Just because people are successful, it doesn't mean they ain't went through nothing. 
Now, when it rains, it rains on the just and unjust. So I connected with Miss Velma. Got my little first group of students after a couple of months. But then once you get your financial aid, things gonna change. And, I, and I'll share, I, I'll show y'all some of that. How things were before financial aid. Get you a good look at that. Good look at that. That was my mama's house. She was a hoarder. She bought a table from Goodwill, put that cloth on it, and put it in the middle of her kitchen, Kim, and said, this is my island, and she was proud of it. Doesn't matter how you start. What matters is how you finish. I bet you she ain't got no island like that now. So we went through accreditation. <clears throat> We got the financial aid. Here it is right here. Here it is. I mean, on a 1,500-hour course. Javonda Jones, Farewell, Pennsylvania. The Pell Grants up to $10,550. Who pays for the Pell Grants? The government. There's no credit base. Pell Grant is free money. They wire to your bank account. How do they wire it? Four different payments. You get 10 students to start Monday or Tuesday, three, three days later, guess what? They're going to wire 3,000 times them 10 students if they qualify for a full pail. Numbers don't lie, y'all. Numbers, numbers are numbers. They don't lie. It's right here. 10 students times 3,000, the first payment, that's 30,000. That's wired to your bank account. You remember you got that PPP loan? Y'all remember that? The money just magically appeared in your account? That's how this is. 451 hours, as long as they got a 67% attendance, 70% grade point average. Guess what? They'll wire another 30,000 times them 10. 901 hours, they'll wire 2,000 for each student times 10, 20,000. Same thing for 1201. That's how the financial aid works. The Pell Grant is no ifs, ands, or buts. Well, what if they... Got less hours, 750 hours, of course, 600. Where to be less Pell Grant money, but they still going to send you money. Well, what if I get 20 students and my tuition is $20,000 and they all qualify for a full Pell Grant and student loan? They're going to wire 20,000 times the 20 students over that course, 400,000. Have an instructor to teach them, pay them 30 or 40,000. You make another 100,000 on the clinic floor. That's a half bill they made. Well, how does the student loans work? Okay, 1,500 hours. You got subsidized, unsubsidized student loans, the same as in the universities. You, they can qualify up to 15, 16,000. Well, do they check credit? Nope. Now, if they defaulted on another student loan or they maxed out their student loans by being a professional student, they may not qualify for the student loan. Okay, if they defaulted, they can't get another student loan. They can't get a Pell Grant if they default on the student loan at another school until they resolve that matter. Well, how do they disperse that 15, 16,000? Are they going to send it to me all at one time? I hate to be the bearer of bad news. No, they're not going to send you that 15, 16,000 all at one time. But I will tell you this. The people that's been in the military, Sam, Raquel, you get the military students, they will send your tuition in one walk. If your tuition is 20000 25000 hey, the GI Bill, the people has been in the military, zip in one walk. Vocational rehabilitation, they'll send it to you. Any mental, physical, health, dependence problem, they'll send it to you in one walk. When I say one walk, one payment. But that's okay with the financial aid. Four payments ain't bad. They'll send you the first one, 4,700, 30 days after they started. This is when you are accredited and you're approved for financial aid. Three days, you just got the 3,000. 30 days later, guess what? You got 4,700. So think about that. Them 10 students, you got 30,000 within three or four days. Now you get another 47,000 within 30 days. That ain't bad. That's 77,000 for 10 students in the first 30 Three days. They hit 451, another 4,700 times 10. 47,000. Remember when they hit 451, you get another 30,000, 3,000 times the 10 for the Pell Grant. That's how the money works. 
They hit 901 hours, they get 3,500. You do. They wire the money to your bank account. Your bank account, the school owner, not the student. Mm -mm. They wire it to the school owner's bank account. And then the money goes down, down the balance, the balance, the balance. Now, when they have a zero balance and they wire more money, then you just got to write a refund check to the student. But you've already got your money. That's how the financial aid works, y'all. That's how these school owners get rich. Simple as that. You get 100 students. I'm going to get 100 students at 20,000. That's two mil. Think about it. I had 200 some students at one school, at one location. See, you got to remember when I started out. But then you got to look at when I got accredited. Right here, this school had 200 something students, the largest barber school at the time. Imagine that 200 something students at 20,000 per student. Yeah, it's a lot of money. God will bless you beyond measure. That's when things started to change. My mama raised three kids by herself. I grew up eating oatmeal, cream of wheat, potatoes, beans, spaghetti, the big block of free government cheese. The, we had the powdered eggs and the powdered milk. That's how I grew up. Wasn't no Tony the Tiger on a, uh, the Frosted Flakes. We, we, we had the generic Frosted Flakes. Wasn't no Toucan Sam, the Fruit Loop Man. We, we had the generic. It didn't even come in a box. It came in a, a big old uh, package or whatever. Wasn't no prize in there. You know how you get the cereal box with the prize? No. That's how I grew up. Some nights my mama didn't eat, but we ate. That woman went to work when it was so early in the morning, it was dark outside. When she came home, it was dark outside. She worked her tail off. And when I got that school and I got accredited, all her dreams came true. She, she retired, I retired, I did all of that. So that's what this school is about. And I'm gonna put a link up here. And, and when she got it, when we got accredited, I had to get her that house, y'all. I had to. Because God told me, and I said I was going to do it. You give them their flowers while they're here. Yeah, that was the kitchen. But look what God did. She got that island with them granite countertops. And them, I don't even know what them uh, cabinets are in there. They're some kind of special cabinets, very expensive. I had to ask, Miss Velma was the one that picked them out. She designed the inside of the house, had the whole thing redone, the flooring. That ain't no, them, them floors is real hardwood floor, some kind of bamboo stuff. I don't know what it is, but I'm telling y'all, the school will do that. Well, the school, and it's not all about material things. It's about family, freedom, and peace of mind. All of that. The school will do that. The, the, that's what the school will do. It will do that. And I'm going to leave y'all with this. This probably, this video right here makes it all worth it, y'all. Makes it all worth it. And I'll put that link up. Any barber, stylist, nail tech, beauty professional that wants to change their life, that wants to up their level, you're tired of working behind the chair and you want to move to the next level and you want to live a lifestyle of family, freedom, time freedom, financial freedom, then I recommend the school blueprint, openyourschool.com. Uh, Ms. Velma created this program for beauty professionals just like you and me who want to move to the next level. I have my mom in here. She'll tell you a little bit about it. So how has me opening that school changed your life? Well, we were living uh, in the neighborhood. It was a pretty nice neighborhood in Nashville. And so after Chen opened the school and had worked a while, he told me he wanted me to retire. And about that time was the time that I was going to be at the age and have the years in. So he was able, so I he was able to convince me to retire. And I did. And he moved. Uh, I didn't even know he had this house, but he always said that he wanted to get a, another house for me and that so that I could retire and just do the things I wanted to do while I was still able to do it. And so since I've been out here in Hendersonville, 
I've enjoyed a life of something that I never imagined. And I'm enjoying the house. I'm enjoying being with him because he works from home. And uh, I just sort of keep house the best I can, but I'm living a, a really good retirement life because of him. Well, I know a lot of y'all want to start creating generational wealth and retire your mom or grandma or your wife or husband and move to a better place and have financial freedom and time freedom. If you're in the beauty industry, then I recommend this. So the school blueprint, that's just a vehicle opening the school. That's it. It's just a vehicle to be able to put your family in a different position. Um, th th that's all it is. That's it. I mean, you, you got options. There's nothing wrong with having a shop. I tell everybody that. Nothing wrong with that. But the school is something that can put you in a better position financially, mentally, physically, emotionally, in all areas. So I'll put this link up here and I'll be calling some of y'all back. I'm gonna call some of y'all back today because I mean, I'm out of town, I'm not doing anything. I'm gonna go to an event later on. So really, I'm gonna call y'all back probably within the next hour. I don't know if any of y'all have any questions. Every Sunday I come on here. Every Wednesday I come on here. No matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm doing, to just share. Um, anybody got any questions? There's the link. Um, I want to thank you all for even coming. Because it's Sunday, y'all could be doing anything. So George tuned in. Eric, who else? Alani, Mr. Randolph is up in the house. Jasmine, Javonda Jones, Farewell, Pennsylvania, Chemistry, Leandra, uh, Lisa Wilson, that Bill, Devron, Delaware, Paris Tran is in the house. Uh, Regina Phillips, we want to thank you. Sam, Sister Queen, Tanisha, Tanya Jenkins is up in the house. Victoria, Vivian is in the house. David, what questions? Um, do y'all have ants? Oh, what have y'all been doing? I mean, tell me what, what y'all got going on going into 2023. I mean, what y'all gonna do? 2022 is almost over. Well, what are we gonna do going into 2023? I mean, anybody got any questions from what we talked about today? Any questions? Because I want to be sure I answer everything before we get off of here. Okay, well, we have no questions. Okay, really, Fridge, I'm going to be hustling and saying, hey, we got payment. If y'all need a payment plan, all y'all got to do is fill out the form. I'll call you back. Okay? So the link is there for y'all to fill out. And I'm going to hop over here on Instagram. So y'all have a good rest of the Sunday. And peace out. <laughs>